everyone! Are you ready to explore tide pools with us and search for interesting marine creatures? In the middle of the winter, the tides at the Pacific coast of California are especially low, and we are going to use this opportunity and take a look at the world that usually is hidden under the water. The location is a beach near Pigeon Point Lighthouse, where a road called Pigeon Point Road was recently paved parallel to the highway, creating a good place where to park a vehicle and have an easy and free access to the ocean. On a regular day, you would see just sand and waves, but we are here at the time when ocean waters recede, revealing rocks covered with shells and barnacles. The closer to the water, the more life is on the rocks. The first thing you see is lots of mussels or mussel beds. These are bivalve mollusks that attach themselves to the rocks with super strong threads of organic material. The edges of the shells are quite sharp and can easily cut a bare foot. These mussels are filter feeders, meaning that they catch tiny organisms floating in the water. Tight clumping to each other helps them combat strong waves and predators like sea stars. Occasionally, there are some goose barnacles among the black, shiny shells of bivalve mollusks. Another version of the name is a stalked or gooseneck barnacle. The long foot indeed resembles a gooseneck, but the name goose barnacle originates from an ancient belief that certain birds actually develop from the barnacles. In fact, there is a species called barnacle goose. These birds spend winter in Scotland and Ireland, but they breed in Greenland. So, in old times, folks never saw the hatchlings, but they so similarly looked like barnacles, attached to driftwood, and created a legend according to which these geese do not lay eggs, but grow on trees and emerge from the goose of barnacles, like butterflies from cocoons. The birds, by the way, have a white face and black neck and really do look like goose barnacles from the distance. More scientific studies have proven that goose barnacles are crustaceans, which are shrimp-like animals that decide to go on with a sedentary lifestyle. They often form their own aggregations or communities. Empty spaces between the islets of mussels are occupied by limpets, an interesting group of mollusks that graze on algae by scraping the algae-covered surface of the rocks with the tongue-like organ called radula. Radula has thousands of tiny teeth made of iron, and they work like a sandpaper or a file. There are many different types of limpets, and you can also see cool specimens by following a link in description to this video. Limpets live on the rocks. They occupy and protect by pushing away other limpets from areas from their own patch of algae. Certain species with common name seaweed limpets like large brown algae. They are well masked by coloration and have elongated shells to fit the form of the leaves or stalks. The mollusk often entrenches itself in a shallow pit called a base, which serves like a parking place and helps to stay attached during strong currents. Small limpets may live on the top of a shell of a giant limpet, such as this owl limpet. The minions make their own bases on the shell of the giant. This little guy fell off the rock or something. We will put him back on. You can see that the mollusk has a strong foot that creates suction force to keep it attached. This muscle is a reason why many prehistoric humans living in coastal areas gather limpets for food. It's still a part of a menu in some countries. Anemones spread tentacles when in the water, but being exposed to air, they curl in and stick gravel particles on the surface of their bodies, protecting themselves from the harsh sunlight, especially ultraviolet, and dry air. The sandy bumps on the rocks are actually anemones covered with sand. And, as you can see, there are fields and fields of these in this place.
Here are more limpets waiting for high tide to start crawling around. By the way, limpet mines are certain type of mines used by Navy people. These mines have magnets to attach a metal structure, like the bottom of a warship. This is an abalone of decent size. And here is a sea star. White cap limpets, often covered with sort of crust, calcareous deposits made by coralline algae. Before taking home a shell, make sure you know all the regulation applied to the particular beach and never ever remove live creatures from their habitat. From time to time, we see people with buckets, and we also saw them being fined for such an illegal activity. So, be warned. Some crabs live on the brown algae called kelp. The kelp crab has a perfect camouflage, and it's really hard to distinguish it from a leaf of kelp. Chitons are mollusks similar to limpets in terms of the lifestyle, but their shells are made of several overlapping shells like an armor of a medieval knight. They may be difficult to spot. Clearly, in these tide pool communities, space is tight, but the diversity is great. You can notice many different species on one square foot of the rock surface. Here we have a drama of survival and a bunch of tricks to improve chances for staying alive to see another day. These are paddock clams that burrow holes in the soft rocks and use their holes like combs. Take a closer look at the sand. There is a variety of tiny but cute shells. Limpets that have holes on the top of their conical shells are called keyhole limpets. This is a beautiful one. It is also unusual. Let us know if you recognize the species. Some limpets are carnivorous, like this one from the genus of Diodora. They feed on sponges and bryozoans, which are animals. Well, we hope you like this video, and if you do, please subscribe to keep in touch and help us accomplish the goal of 1,000 subscribers and meet the criteria for a YouTube partner program. Thanks for watching, and good luck!